I'm Darren Schmitz with VMware. In this third video of the series, I will show configuring the site pair mappings in advanced settings within Site Recovery Manager. Site pair mappings are important within Site Recovery Manager because they establish the one-to-one -one relationships of the different resources between both sites. Let's get started by clicking View Details for the site pair that was configured in the last video. From this screen, all the resource mappings that can be configured are arranged along the left-hand column. Working our way top to bottom, the Replication Servers section shows which vSphere Replication Servers are in use at both sites by clicking on each vCenter instance. Since we are not using a ray-based replication, these options can be collapsed as we move on to the Network Mapping section. Once there, clicking on the New button launches the wizard to define the network mappings. The Creation mode allows resources with matching names to be automatically paired. However, due to some of the built-in networks being unneeded, Manual mode will suffice for the Network Mapping section. Expanding the distributed virtual switches reveals all the networks for both sites. The key to this exercise is matching one-for-one -one networks both on Site 1 and Site 2. While most of the built-in networks like the Edge networks and HCX networks are probably not necessary, an admin could add them if needed. That all said, the two custom created networks required in this environment are the Management Network and the Workload Network. With all of our equivalent networks defined, clicking Next continues to the Reverse Mappings screen. Reverse mappings are used by the Reprotect mechanism for a workflow to flow in the opposite direction. In this example, the reverse mappings are the mapping definitions from Site 2 back to Site 1. By default, when testing a recovery plan, SRM will auto-create isolated networks. However, admins do have the option to click Change and specify any network desired. An additional feature with each network mapping is IP customization. This will customize each virtual machine's IP settings as they move between sites. For example, if a virtual machine is assigned IP 33.20 at Site 1, it will be given 53.20 at Site 2. However, since the demo virtual machines are using DHCP, I will just cancel. Folder mappings are next. Much like the other resource categories, the equivalent folders are added, the reverse mappings are selected, and the category is completed. Resource mappings define the equivalent resource groups in the cluster. So if you have specific groups for production, test, or development, they can all be added to ensure balanced application performance levels when the virtual machines are started at the other site. Storage policies must also have mappings. Due to the large number of built-in policies, setting the creation mode to automatically prepare mappings potentially saves multiple clicks. In this case, all 12 policies are automatically matched and added. Within the Placeholder Data Stores section, the vSAN data stores for each site have already been automatically added. Finally, there are the Advanced Settings. While the defaults are typically recommended when first getting started, these settings may need to be adjusted as the environment scales. The settings for large Site Recovery Manager environments can be found in the VMware Online documentation. Now that all the environment's prerequisite setup items are complete, check out the next video in the series to learn how to configure replications, protection groups, and recovery plans for an application. To learn more about Google Cloud VMware Engine, visit our site at cloud.google.com slash VMware-Engine. Thank <laughs> you.